Here's our old school oscilloscope, cathode ray tube design. I have a power pack. We use the oscilloscope to measure rapidly changing electrical signals. It has an old style vacuum tube inside it. At the back of the tube is a tungsten filament that emits electrons when it gets hot. There's two accelerating plates that the electrons go through. And then there's deflection plates in the top and bottom and the sides and the beam shoots up and hit the screen. Now you're not really looking at the electrons, you're looking at the light being given off when the electrons hit the inside of the glass, which is coated in phosphors. When the electrons hit that, the electrons in the phosphors jump to a higher energy level, then they jump down, give off the light that we see. The mass of the electron is so small that a small change in voltage can cause a quick change in the motion of the beam. I can control the voltage on the top and bottom plates, make the beam go down, make the beam come up. This knob can control the voltage on the side plates and automatically change the voltage so the beam sweeps across. The beam sweeps across, the gun's turned off, the voltage is reset and the beam sweeps across. The voltages change automatically such that if this plate is positive, the beam is to the side. If this plate is positive, the beam sweeps this way. This is calibrated so that we know how long it takes for the beam to sweep across. Because there's a slight glow of the phosphors, we can have a trace here and we can see how the beam is just at a certain level. The top and bottom plates can now be used to detect a voltage coming from the power pack. I turn the knob up and the beam goes up. How do I get the beam to go down? Well, I can reverse the polarity on the power pack. Turn the voltage up, the beam's going down. The bottom plate is positive to bring the beam down. The oscilloscope is used to detect rapidly changing voltages. To demonstrate, I'll plug this into the AC current. Now I have the leads plugged into the AC side of the power pack. I'm going to turn up the voltage, and we can see a pattern appear. This is generating voltage that oscillates 60 times a second. I can spread out that pattern by increasing the sweep rate. We're going to be using the oscilloscope later on when we do our chapter on sound, because sound varies quickly, and we'll be able to detect that. So we'll diagram out an oscilloscope here. This is the cathode ray tube at the heart of the equipment, also known as a CRT. There's a vacuum inside the glass tube, and there's a tungsten steel wire that when it gets hot, emits electrons. It's known as the electron gun. A cloud of electrons are emitted, and some of those electrons will pass through a hole in these two accelerator plates. The plate on the right is positive, the plate on the left is negative. There's no electric field outside of these plates, but when the electrons get in between the plates, they feel a strong acceleration to the right. Then the beam passes past the deflection plates. When the beam strikes the inside of the glass, there's a phosphor coating on it, which absorbs the energy from the electrons and gives off light. This light is not the electrons, it's the light being given off when the phosphor gets excited and the electrons jump down from the higher energy level. Now, if we make the top deflection plate positive and the bottom one negative, the beam curves up. And the same idea happens with the horizontal deflection plates. Now, let's zoom in on the acceleration plates and do a problem. Here we have the two plates, negative and positive. If you imagine a positive test charge between these plates, you'll see that the electric field is going to the left. You may recall that the electric field is zero outside of these plates. Consider the field from the positive plate would be going to the right, but the field from the negative plate would be going to the left. So what do they do? They cancel out out here. Same thing happens over here. But in between, the positive plate has a field this way, and a negative plate has a field this way. So they build up and are stronger going to the left. Now, I don't have a positive test charge. I actually have a negative electron. The negative electron is going to go in the opposite direction of that field. It's going to go towards the positive plate. The force on that electron times the distance it acts is work. The work per charge is voltage. 
Now we know what the charge is on an electron, and we're going to know the voltage across these plates. If I multiply the Q times the voltage, I'm going to get the work done to the charge. Where do you think that work is going? Yeah, the electron's speeding up the whole way through here. It's going to have a final velocity. The work done to the charge is turning into kinetic energy. And of course, the kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So let's say we have an oscilloscope with accelerating plates with 800 volts across the plates. It's not unusual. The charge on an electron, that's the mass of the electron. You can now solve for this final velocity. And we get 1.68 times 10 to the seventh meters per second. Now, what could we compare that to? How about the speed of light? Three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Yeah, those little electrons have very little mass. So that's why they accelerate so quickly. And we have a velocity that's in the vicinity of 10% of the speed of light. Now, this is typically how the old school televisions work. And the beam would be sweeping across the screen, turning on and off, creating a whole bunch of little dots on the screen that would form an image. And you might say, well, this is old school technology. Who needs it anymore? But if this beam was traveling faster and it struck a piece of metal, it can give off x-rays. This is the basis for an x-ray machine. So if you're going into medicine, think about this. Every piece of equipment you touch is going to have a foundation in physics.